day continues. Again, I'm with Cristina Bifulco. Cristina, we started with a view from the top and the board engagement in sustainability. Now we want to hear the voice of leaders on the ground. Absolutely, Andrea. It's very important. Also because of this year, we wanted to make sure that we were giving enough time and attention to the regions to really understand what are the local priorities and what our management there is doing to try to support the local communities. Yeah, and let me introduce our guests because here in the studio we have Alejandro Quiroz, who is Latin America CEO. Welcome, Alejandro. And remotely connected, Andrea Pirondini, who is CEO of North America, and Cinzia Farise, who is CEO of Middle East and Africa. Welcome, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure having you. Now, my first question is, in your territory, what's the level and importance of sustainability in the countries and regions that you serve? Cinzia Farise, would you like to start? With pleasure. The sustainability has also been a priority for our group and part of our culture. The MEAT region uh, uh, wants to effectively reinforce uh, his business model to integrate economic, social and environmental responsibility in all aspects of our activity. And sustainability is definitely the main driver of our strategy and vision, and our daily efforts are meant to become an integral part of our corporate culture. Uh, I think that uh, this is also aligned with the local government approach. For example, in Oman Vision 2040, to achieve a developed, diversified, and sustainable national economy is a priority. On last March, uh, we participate, uh, organized by the Ministry of Energy, uh, to a uh, No Money Sustainability Week to reaffirm the Sultanate position on the global map uh, as a country that uh, prioritizes but also incorporates and advocates sustainability in all its activity. UAE also seeks to become a global hub for a successful model on the new green economy. Last January launched the Green Economy Initiative under the slogan, A Green Economy for Sustainable Development. Saudi Arabia also, Vision 2030 is a catalyst for reform with sustainability at its heart. And with the announcement of the National Renewable Energy Program, they try to reach net zero uh, by 2060. And also in Turkey, in Turkey, just to mention another uh, example, our main customers are already regularly performing strict audit on sustainability to evaluate our competitiveness also in terms of sustainability approach. Even so, in India, mm -hmm. ESG is now an unstoppable moment. And to support this movement, we have to do our part and we're ready to do it. A special project in this direction is our Sustainability Academy, that will represent the fifth academy of Prismian Group all around the world, based in Oman, but for the entire group. We are very proud of it. We are receiving great enthusiasm at the local level with possible partnership coming from all the most prestigious university. And we decided to create it at our R&D center to affirm how sustainability is strictly embedded in innovation. Let me also hear Andrea Pirondini. What's the view from North America, Andrea? Thank you, Andrea. Uh, sustainability is a, is, a, is a pillar of the Prismian strategy for the group and for North America in particular. And, and I would like to maybe look at it from another angle uh, in terms of business generation, business drive. If you look at the, the key engines of growth at the moment that are impacting the group, uh, uh, clearly, energy transition, digitalization are absolutely fundamental. Uh, for uh, some years, there was uh, a certain important investment in North America in the classic land renewables. Now we are moving from a prevalence of wind more towards solar. And now, just now, is starting a very important investment also in offshore renewable parks. For us, we are the major player in, uh, in this arena, both when we talk about power distribution as well as high voltage projects. So this is uh, uh, extremely important for us. If you look at the investments of the company in these, uh, in these last years and in the years to come, we, we have very significant amount of money that are committed to this. We announced more or less one year 
approximately a hundred million dollar investment in order to support our customers with new capacity and capabilities for medium voltage and high voltage transmission and uh, also uh, it was recently announced uh, an investment in excess of 200 million dollar for the new factory in Boston in Brayton Point to support interconnectors and the offshore industry. Another significant amount of money is also allocated in North America in expanding the capacity of uh, uh, telecom optical cables where we are growing across the board, growing in terms of fiber, growing in terms of, uh, of factories. In particular, recently was uh, announced uh, the reconversion of a copper cable factory into an optical factory in order to accelerate uh, towards the demand from our customers that uh, is growing faster and faster. So besides from the classic perimeter of sustainability where we are very much engaged with all what we are doing for uh, in order to transition the energy generation inside uh, uh, the company towards renewable resources as well as in supporting uh, also in terms of social ambition uh, our 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 internal stakeholders uh, i would like to stress very much the business drive and the top line growth that is uh, that all these all these external trends uh, are, are generating on uh, on the group. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Alejandro Quiroz, uh, you're the CEO of Latin America. You have more than three decades of experience in different industry, you know, from automotive to industrial technologies to durable consumer goods. How do you see the challenges and the sense of sustainability in your countries and regions? Well, sustainability in Latin America is very much aligned to what uh, has been already said from other regions. However, I would like to add yet another layer, that is the society. In this case, Latin America is a very young continent, and not only the people that we serve, the customers, but our communities have the hunger to catch up with, uh, with Europe, with North America, and I think there is a coordinated effort already now where local communities, governments, and industry, and especially Prism at the heart of this energy transition, is bringing to the sustainability targets. So I think the young population in our employee base, they are completely um, understanding the need for engaging in all the dimensions of uh, ESG. And I think we have the responsibility to provide exactly that framework, to provide training, to increase the level of uh, our capabilities in all aspects of just performing and conducting the business of having more innovative type cables, but also the way we engage with our uh, customers, more digital tools, solutions that are just a faster response. And I think all that now in Latin America across the extensive geography, all the way from Mexico to Chile and Argentina, is taking place and is catching up very fast. Uh, well, Alejandro, talking about this, how far along do you think that you are in the journey towards sustainability in your region? Uh, we are not too far ahead, behind. Uh, definitely, the sense of urgency is very much there, uh, as I mentioned, just not from our employees, but the, the governments and the society. As a company, internally, we believe that Prismian, we are more focused and more serious about the actions that we are taking to be ahead of the game, but that has to work in synchrony. It's an entire ecosystem of industries, uh, companies, uh, that we all have to work together. But I believe there's a big cooperation and positive attitude from uh, the government, the governments in our uh, communities and the places we serve that we believe will be very soon just bringing the numbers to where we all, all want the targets that we have set up. Andrea Pirondini, where do you think you are in North America, especially in terms of climate change and social ambitions? Well, if we talk about, uh, about the group, um, well, I, I have to say I am, I am really impressed about uh, the enthusiasm. We, we have uh, a group of people that is very wide, that is working on, uh, on driving sustainability issues forward. Uh, we have a local sustainability committee and uh, something like 50 people that are participating into various initiatives into that. And, uh, and as I said, what, what is 
what is uh, for me fantastic is the energy that uh, the group uh, is uh, is generating. So a lot of enthusiasm, a wide array of initiatives that, as I was saying, span from uh, uh, solar panels in uh, some of our factories, uh, transitioning towards abandoning fossil fuel generation across the board, and uh, social, a lot of attention to the human capital, to people, where we would like uh, to be to be a benchmark as uh, as a European company eradicated in North America, a benchmark uh, and uh, and a leader uh, in in the territory. So a lot uh, is uh, is uh, is done in this uh, in this area. You know, countries are different, cultures are very different. There is uh, a lot that America can uh, can teach to us in terms of ways of doing things, ways of doing business. I think also there is a lot of inspiration that we might bring in here coming from certain European practices when we talk about, uh, when we talk about human capital. Cl clearly always very respectful of the different approaches and the different uh, mentalities. Cinzia Farise, how about your regions? Uh, certainly we have uh, different degrees of maturity when we deal uh, with sustainability across the MEAT region. It's still a long journey. However, we have to support it. Uh, for example, in our ESG plan, we encourage greater sustainability approach, starting from diversity, quality and inclusion in our own business, but also cooperating to foster these same values throughout the broader business community. We are doing so, for example, through our system project dedicated to young and employed Omani national women in different technical disciplines with the involvement of recognized technical institutes, uh, an initiative which is endorsed by the local Ministry of Higher Education. And also we studied a session for kids in STEM with the School of Robotics and Engineering that had work as a after school dedicated to kids of our employees or also as an itinerant STEM program to be delivered this year across the whole country through a dedicated roadmap. So a long journey, eh? but a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, we, we are able to build uh, through our 39 uh, uh, regional sustainability ambassador an ESG plan this year. The ambition is very high. Uh, a plan including a, re a clear commitment, a clear strategy, a clear planning, a clear organization with training session on sustainability for all employees. This plan resulted in 39 projects with as many responsible, supported by dedicated investment, specific KPI to be achieved, and more internet on a monthly basis through our sustainability KPI management system. Some of our projects are related to our climate ambition, for example, solar roof and electrical for lift in our plant, for example, recycling recycling on plant scrap, recycling input rate increase. Other are, are related to our social ambition. And it is the case of uh, a MEAT leadership program to shape the sustainable leaders of the future, women and children in STEM, a behavior-based safety program in Turkey, and also a CSR plan uh, for 2022 with two major countries of the region, where, by the way, we have the presence of two listed companies. Well, Cinzia, Andrea and Alejandro, now the Sustainability Week will be populated by digital events presented by your regions and your individual countries with different subjects and topics. And I remind everyone that it would be possible and it's already possible to register to these events through the platform. Let's anticipate some of the team. For example, Latin America will focus on volunteering and safety and sustainability supply chain, North America on promoting social inclusion innovating towards a more sustainable futures. And for the Middle East, the, the, the player, major player would be Oman, Turkey, and India. This is just a few of the digital events we're going to have during the week. And uh, on this, my last question, and uh, starting again with uh, uh, Cinzia Farise, is can you mention any local initiative uh, to support sustainability, you know, from social, climate, or innovation, and the way that it's relevant for you to share with your colleagues today? 
Uh, I, I was saying uh, we have uh, definitely a huge plan uh, for ESG this year, 39 project. Uh, I think it will be a good opportunity to share with all our stakeholders during the next three sessions that you mentioned, uh, throughout uh, our local ambassador, but also institutional speaker and prestigious customer. We will illustrate our social ambition in Oman launching our systems project dedicated to young and employed Oman national women in different technical disciplines. We will speak about leadership in innovation in Turkey, underlying how innovation and digitization are representing the main enablers for a sustainability approach in Turkey. And our climate ambition in India, engaging uh, on innovative action on circular economy to reduce carbon footprint by using less polluting material with our innovative cable solution and increasing also waste recycling. Andrea Pirondini. Yes, I mean, I, I would focus two things and I'll try to summarize in a few words. When you were rightly saying, Andrea, before, there's a lot of focus in terms of, of new product offer uh, along, along uh, the, the lines of, of the opportunity that we have in the market. And I would like to speak about Renewable Plus. So we're not selling anymore just cables when we talk about renewable customer. We are selling a system that includes also network components, tracking systems, uh, uh, EOS, premiums electronics, monitoring, testing systems. So we have put together a system, an offer, that uh, uh, is basically the only proposal that we had to the market this year, and this was sold out uh, in immediately in 15 days we sold out all our capacity when we proposed that into the market in in october so great success from that initiative last but not least as you were saying social inclusion we were not particularly happy last year about uh, certain feedbacks that we got uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, the situation in our in our factories, we have 28 factories in North America, so it's quite uh, a wide, uh, a wide uh, and articulated footprint. And we have decided that we want to change the situation. So, extreme focus in understanding better what we can do to improve the situation of our associates in the factory, in particular, and uh, engagement committees specific engagement committees with the involvement of shop floor people, desk workers, everybody, and actions, actions in order to impact and improve the situation. So this, I think, is a fundamental initiative that we have taken very, very seriously this year. And we are now actioning with, uh, with uh, the objective to change and improve for good uh, the quality the well-being of the people, the quality of, of life, and the well-being of the people that are working into, into our plants. These guys have been fundamental. They have kept uh, uh, our company together. They sustained an ever-improving result during COVID and, and in these months, always present in the factories. We need to do better with uh, with factories we need to improve the situation in there uh, dramatically we are very committed and alejandro. i guess yeah. we'll have some positive surprises all right uh, hopefully alejandro well our example in latin america besides everything that uh, we are doing similar to my colleagues in other regions uh, will be focused on safety but at the customer level uh, we are as a continent a powerful source for minerals and in mining there have been some local innovation, locally developed innovations in mining cables that will be safer to operate and will be of a great value to our customers that are the owners of those mines. So actually from here, uh, I'm going straight to Peru. We will be meeting with government officials, with big customers in that sector, because we believe that there's a great value in the innovation that President, President is providing to them with the new cables for mining that will be more, more safer for them in their factories. All right, thank you, all, all of you. And Christina was kind of impressive hearing, you know. So plenty of initiatives and very different initiatives. Very different and very, the, the, the amount of energy, motivation is truly inspirational. I was aware of the initiative still listening to my colleagues is truly, is truly inspirational. All right, thanks again to Alejandro Quiros here in Milan with Andrea Pirondini and Cinzia Farise.